Welcome to Movers and Shakers, everybody. Are you ready to be blessed tonight? God is, God has you in mind. God knows you by name. God knows you needed to be here tonight. And you will not be disappointed. Because he has a word for you. Somebody, today is the last day you're going to use drugs. I'm serious. Somebody today ends your struggles with alcohol and other things of that nature. Amen. Because God is faithful. Somebody today you're going to be healed. I mean healed. I'm, I mean completely healed. That sickness shall never arise again in your life. Someone today you're going to get saved. You're going to give your life to Jesus. You're going to start and get on a course. Amen. Please have your seats. Welcome. Can you appreciate all the pastors and all the network leaders who are here with us today? They have moved and shaked. Who is that one saying it's wrong English? Plus our friends, our guest pastors, you're welcome. All right, can, you think we can get started? The guys in the corridor, are you okay? Have you got a step to sit on? M my topic this evening is the giant killer. That you are. Because you may think we are talking about a giant killer elsewhere. There is a giant killer seated in your chair, ready to slay giants, the giants of addiction, the giants of sin and sickness, the giants that want to tear down your generation. You are the person that God has called and appointed for such a time as this. It's going to be a quick message so that you can go out and breathe after. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 1. Uh, Pastor Ari is in the house. You are ready? Mm. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Now, sit down. Now, the Philistines gathered. Are you following? Now, the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes Damim. I can see you are not reading with me, so we are going to repeat. Ha has the scripture come? One, two, we read. Now, the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Soko which belongs to Judah, they encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes Damim. Um, now, wait before we continue. Say, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm ready for the word of God. I will never be the same again. Amen. So this is a quick Bible study this evening from this chapter, although it's a long chapter, we are going to skip verses as we talk about a giant, the giant killer that you are. Amen. Be very prophetic about it. The giant killer that, that you are. I hope you are not taking tea in the midst of this. Unless you follow that formula of Dawayamoto Nimoto. Now, I forgot to uh, appreciate our hosts, Pastor Dr. Okulo and Mrs. Pastor Okulo of Worship Harvest downtown. Oh, yes. Powerful. We have had a great time. Wow. That's all right. That's all right. Thank you. We have had a great time since morning and have been so gracious having some of us here. So thank you so much. It's a blessing. 
Now, of course, I know you have read about your ticket for First Angela's concert. Amen. Who is that one who hasn't bought a ticket? Next Sunday afternoon, where are you going to be? We are all going to Nalia. Yeah. Now I can tell you there is more air there, but we are all going to be there. Okay. Yeah, for the concert. Are we agreed? The time being, five o'clock. Yeah. Don't come. At, if you come at three, you can get open at five. If you come at three, you finish all the eats at the Brin Cafe. So five. And then at this event right now, you can get your Mountain of the Lord's Camp ticket at half price. Yeah, if you haven't, because it's, it's 100,000 for Mountain of the Lord's Camp. But right now, they are, we are registering people for 50K after the preaching. Because some of you, I can see you're looking for where the registration team is. Where are we going to do it from? They're at the back. There's a table there. Don't go there when I'm preaching. But as soon as I'm done, go get your registration for 50,000 50, plus all the centers where they are hosting movers and shakers this evening. You can get milk tickets for 50K. Amen. <laughs> Sit down. Now, you may want to know that it actually costs more than 100,000 to host you at Mountain of the Lord's Camp. So even the 100,000 was a discount. So, if you don't get at 50, really, <clears throat> yeah, you may find it will, of course, go back to 100K. Then, as the day nears, it will go higher and higher so that those who, like, you know, of his power doesn't alley. So, we are giving you at 50 because I know some people here who want to buy at 200K. So, they, they, that will work. Uh, Amen. Are you still with me? So we're saying the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle at Soko, which belongs to Judah. The reality of life is that there are going to be fights. Some people are not clicking what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> the reality of life is there are going to be fights, battles. Whether you've provoked the battle or not, you'll be there minding your business one day and the battle will erupt in your territory because these guys gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, not they didn't wait to be attacked. They came. Am I making sense? Battles are part of life. In his book, A Good General, Bishop Doug says something. He says, get used to the battle atmosphere. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. Get used yeah. to the battle atmosphere. Yeah. yeah, get used to it. As long as you're on planet Earth, Battles happen. You may not be the one who starts them, but they will happen. There will be battles. Your enzymes, they crush whatever you throw there. Chapati, whoosh, cabbages, whoosh, pork, sha, 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 sha. What else? Gizzard, whoosh, kebab, sha, chaps. But you people who came up with that thing called chaps, what is it even? <laughs> I actually don't know what it is. I know chaps, but I really don't know what it is. It's a flat kebab, and so much the kebab. It's a part with meat in it. What a shock. So, you keep throwing in whole chapatis, what? Four slices of bread. 
for sausages. And then one day, you throw it in. You throw in the sausage. And the sausage pops up here and says, I was eaten. I was I am here. And for the ladies, it might show up somewhere else. I'm here. And that's what... <laughs> uh, what a shock. So then you realize you can no longer eat four sausages and two chapatis for breakfast. You now start adding broccoli, you know? Complicated vegetables. The things you never thought about. Broccoli. What's Who is feeling attacked? The people in this section, why are you agitated? So life can be... Life can be a fight. You're fighting. Am I making sense? When people get married, they automatically expect to have children. Yeah. It's like, supposed to be obvious. But we found that it's no longer as obvious. Some people have been in a fight to have children. It's like something that should have been so of ordinary, natural, and normal. How, when did this become a faith, a faith fight? Others are still in it. Yeah. And I am praying for victory. Amen. Or you, it can be a fight for your joy. Joy is no longer very obvious. That's why there are things called depression. I don't know what, what. Because now your joy is being attacked. And you have, you know now you are in a fight for joy. Am I making sense? First sit down. So I'm saying... There, these guys unprovoked showed up and pitched their camp in the camp in the area of Judah. Am I making sense? Now, do you want to know what happened next? And Saul, now Saul was the king of Israel. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped there anyway to face those guys, okay? Verse 4 is very important. Verse, verse, Pastor Quaker, for. My screen is gone, but verse 4. Can you see it on yours? Let's read. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. One side had a champion. Are you there? The enemy had a champion. The people of God didn't have a champion. Have you ever been in a scenario and it's like, we cooked, we are cooked. Yeah, because the other guys, eh, they didn't even bother. They just say, for us, you talk to them. So one tall guy who is like eight feet tall, nine, 
came and they are like, huh? Tall, big, what? They had a champion. They had a champion. Have you ever been in a situation and realize the other guys have a champion and we don't? And they're like, what are we going to do about this situation? Because the battle is set. One side on the other side, one side on the other side. There's a valley in between. These guys have a champion. In fact, they so trusted in their champion to the degree that they would send him to go and say some things. Verse 8, look at what happened. One, two. Then he stood. Come up with the sound of hitting the shields. That's how. It's a battle. Yeah, there is no cool music. It's just boom, boom, boom. So, so the guys, they're like, they're waiting for what attack. Early morning. Then, so the guys are making noise. So, so let's say Israel is that side. The Philistines are this side. Then one good old guy emerges from the Philistines. Boom. And says, but <laughs> and the like commander looks behind and he says, ah, Why are my guys' pants wet? Fear. This Goliath is not just Goliath, is a spirit, it's not just a person. Because how can one person make a whole army afraid? So the other guys, they say, give us more time. So they all turn and go back. And these ones also go back. The whole day passes, they are playing cards, Ludo, Sequence, Mweso etc. Then the evening drill. Again they come and Goliath repeats. Same speech. He doesn't even change the words. Am I not a Philistine? And he's a servant. Again another. Another round of. And they got it. Now imagine. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, Sunday comes, Monday, like that. Forty days. The one. The champion was not even in the camp. The champion had not even, hadn't even been invited to the fight. The champion was at home taking care of sheep. You're here, you're a young person. You've looked at your extended family. This, you pass them here in the corridors thinking, who's this one? Ah. Mm -mm. Don't count me out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Up to now, you've looked at yourself and said, me. But I can tell you, there are people waiting for deliverance by your hand, by your words, by your actions, by your standing up and saying, this is it. This is it. So, do you know what happened next? Jesse said to his son David, verse 17, take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand and see how your brothers fare and bring back 
news of them. This was supposed to be an errand boy to take food for the real fighters. You may have come here because you were put in a taxi and said we are going. You just were escorting other people. But you may not know that God has an appointment with you to set you on high in spiritual things. To turn you into a champion in your place. David wasn't going to fight. He just woke up that morning and they told him instead of going into the bushes with the sheep, rather take this little food to your brothers and here is some for the captain. I don't know who I'm talking to. You have discounted yourself for so long. You have considered yourself ordinary when there is nothing ordinary about you. You see, you can't change the call of God. Jonah thought by going in the wrong direction, God will change his mind and say, okay, let me find someone else. No, 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 no. After he was out of the bed, the fish, he's like, okay, now. The Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. It's like, you went in the wrong direction, but the mission is not done. Some of you, you went into drinking and sleeping around and you think God has changed his mind about you and said, this one, nothing will come out of him. No, God, my friend, God is back. He's like, I want my champion on her feet. I want my champion in the right place. I want my champion with her armor. I want my champion ready to fight. Because they are giants in the land. They are giants for your generation. Giants of emptiness. Giants of poverty. Giants of lack. Giants of sexual promiscuity. And you need to rise up. Giants of suicide, addictions, depression, and you've been dark, witchcraft. And now, God is saying, my champion, I'm sending you. You may go like a food vendor. You may be going as if you're just going to distribute sandwiches. But I have a plan. I have a plan. My plan to promote you. You know, what always amazes me about this story is that one day David went to bed a shepherd. And the next day he went to bed the captain of the armies of Israel. That is too sudden. One day he went to bed in his father's house. The next day he went to bed in government housing with servants. Oh yes. Your assignment is going to propel you into greatness. Are you understanding? First sit down. Let's, I'm about to start finishing but I haven't yet started. Verse 22, and David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then he, he, as he talked with them, verse 23 is a very good verse. As he talked with them. Hmm? Just jazzing, how is the war? What, I, I think they were not even telling him the truth. They may have been saying, man, we've been beating them. Nothing. Been sitting around for 40 days. But as he talked with them, are you there? Don't be distracted. As he talked with them, there was the champion. The Philistine of Gath, Goliath. Man. Coming up from the armies of the Philistines and he spoke according to the same words. He was like, pass my speech. Told his assistant, would you have that card with my speech? Am I not a Philistine? What? 
He didn't know this time there was someone hearing his words differently. You see, everyone else had been hearing the words with an ear of fear. But this guy, his ear was different. He wasn't trained to fear. He was trained to see the opportunity. You see, there are things you're going to hear that are going to make people afraid. And while on the inside, something is rising on the inside of saying, this looks like the moment. This looks like the moment. This, you see there are When you're trained to fight, eh? when everyone is like, oh, gosh, I'll fight, another fight, you're like, a what? Suddenly you are awake. You're like, where are my weapons? This looks like it's going to be a good day. Get used to the war atmosphere. The other day, one of our building projects was halted boom, by some people. At first, I got annoyed, irritated, discouraged. I'm thinking, what on earth? We got all the things we needed to be building this thing. And after about three days, I started thinking, wait a minute. When will you ever get the opportunity to solve this kind of problem except now? Because you are only as good a leader as the number of crises you have put out. <laughs> so you're there complaining, oh, Kumbe, this is now the opportunity. To test yourselves and see, are we capable of solving this level of problem? Because in future, there are going to be 10 times bigger problems. And if you didn't practice with these small ones. So I started rejoicing in my spirit. I make guys add me to that group that is solving this problem. Because I feel like, I feel like uh, it's less on time. It's less on time. How to deal with this type of problem? Oh, yes. oh yes. You see, over time, as you lead, different opportunities will come to solve different kinds of problems. But at first, it will first look like the most frustrating and reasonable, whatever it is. But if you take a second look, if you pull back and say, what's really going on here? You realize the time for your promotion has come. You can now solve this problem and put it on the list of problems you have solved and are capable of solving. So that when it arises in another place, you already have a playbook and say, what are they saying? Ah, we, this one, we, we've already had them. Call this person and this person, this person. Deploy, dispatch, pass here, go here, take this, minus this. This is what you say. Because you've solved that kind of problem before. Anyway. Am I making sense to someone? So it was supposed to be very bad news for you, for your family. But the fearful ear missed it. The faith ear had caught it and said, hmm. What is the enemy saying again? Ah. <laughs> like, this is it. So David heard them. There are things your parents have heard, or your friends, or whatever, and they dismayed them. And then you will hear those things. And it will be, ah, change has come. Because while the others had them, 
They could only turn back and say, give us more time. We can't fight that fight. You, you're going to hear them and say, what is the reward? So David immediately starts asking, what is the reward? So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches. He will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes. They were, pre you see, you need to fight for higher ideals than a wife, money, and tax exemption. Am I talking? I want you to think about it. Why, were, why is it that these things had been pu pu published on all the trees in the camp? Whoever beats Goliath, money, wife. Why, why do you think people were not trying? It's like, when you're dead, you're not going to marry any wife, okay? <laughs> Tax exemption does not benefit dead people. So you may find that in every generation, when people aim so low for money and benefits, the champion of the enemy keeps talking. No one was willing to stand up to Goliath because, look, the things that were being promised, if he took you out, they would not benefit you. But I know that you're here and you're not fighting for survival. You're not fighting for the money. Your faith is not being practiced for a husband or wife. You're fighting for kingdom advancement. That's why... The other guys in Babylon, they are told you can't worship this idol. They said, look, our God will save us. But even if he does not, let it be known, we will not bow. Now, we need some we will not bow type movers and shakers to start pushing back the darkness. So don't focus. If you focus on these little Things. Satan is going to dangle it down before your face. And instead of seeing your destiny and the history that you could change, you'll just be seeing, what can I get next week? What can I get next month? And that is what has destroyed people's stories. I'm finishing now. You need to go outside and breathe. Verse 28, now Eliab, his brother, oldest brother, had when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know, I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cost? Have you ever found people who have already failed to handle that thing? And you're presenting yourself to say, look, I can try. And I'm like, you're too young. You're a woman. You are what? You're a Ugandan. You are an African. Leave it alone. You don't qualify. Is there not a cause? Let me ask you honestly. When you look at your life, your country, your family, your workplace, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is it okay to just continue 
while Goliath. You know, sometimes when we work, our work is a place to hide from the Goliath voice. I know what I'm talking about because, you know, you can see that you've been working five years, but there's nothing there. You're too scared to change anything. You would rather go back into your tent morning and evening and let Goliath have his rap. But you're not ready to say, wait. This, if this continues like this, where will we be in five years? In another five years? In another ten years? You have to ask yourself that question and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm cutting the rope now. Where does this end? You can't. Look, hope is not a strategy, okay? Just going around the thing, hoping, hoping. Like those guys on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus is talking to them, they don't even know he's the one. He said, for we had hoped. Tonight, you're moving from hope to faith. You're moving from hope to faith that this thing is going to have to change. Oh. There are people here, you're facing your different Goliaths. And other people are telling you, don't touch the guy. So they took him to the king. So David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Huh? What? You're going to what? You're going to... You're going to end illiteracy in your family. You're going to end broken marriages in your generation. You're going to end poverty in your whatever. You're going to make sure everyone has land and property. Are you okay? Say, no, don't worry. I can do this thing. He said, no. You are not able Mm. You are a youth. You are just a young person. That's why Paul told Timothy, do not let anyone despise you because you are young. Amen. Amen. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. Like, I have a story. He's like, you may see me here young and what, but um, not as innocent as I look. I've done some things. I've killed some animals. I've rescued some situations. I've faced some giants. Says, no, 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 no. You know, you may be underestimating me, but let me tell you a story. Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth mouth like you lion bring my lamb look <laughs> some things can only be by the spirit of God okay I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it and I think Saul is looking at him saying, repeat the story again. Re re repeat again. What, what did he say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your servant used to do it. Like, when was this? Well, not too long ago. Can you corroborate this information? Oh, yes. Yes, my, my king. He 
you see, there are already things God has done in your life that are a sign of what God is about to do. So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor, tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So he took them off. You see, they are going to try to give you yesterday's strategies and tactics and say you must sing, do the thing like this. You must sing it like this. You must face this side. And you realize it's not working. Because God wants to give you what fits you. Are you understanding? For us, when we were still younger, we used to watch Bishop Jakes. And we all wanted to preach like Bishop Jakes. In fact, some brothers in the, in the fellowship actually tried preaching like Bishop Jakes. But it only became comical, okay? <laughs> when people get those very colorful jackets. <laughs> First of all, it should be a certain size for it to work. And you're trying to wipe, wipe sweat, which is not there. Because the other man's sweat is coming from the stage lights. You, you are in a fellowship where there are no stage lights. You're not sweating. And, and he's preaching with a B3 organ in the background. Wow. This is so bad. In the fellowship, you only have African drums. <laughs> and you're trying to sound like... Suffice, suffice it to say, it didn't work. At all, at all, at all. I remember one brother in the fellowship. I could see that this young man is really trying out the TDJX thing. But it, it was not, it was, the longer he went on, the, the, the worse we felt for him. And then he finally finished. We were not blessed because we were all turned into intercessors. So leave Saul's armor alone because even he could not use it. So David chose some stones, took his staff, and went to meet the Philistine. Verse 43, I'm finishing. Are you ready for the finish? So the Philistine said to David, am I a dog? Satania joga. Huh? Satan jogs. Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? <laughs> Just when you think you've marshaled your best move. Someone here, God is giving you a strategy that looks like sticks to the world. But by the time this season is over, you will be elevated. And the world will be at your feet asking, how do we do this? I hear that in the spirit. You have a thing that looks like sticks. Among your relatives, among your workmates, among your friends, you have a thing that is so ridiculous it looks like sticks. It is a thing to be mocked. 
People are even looking at you and saying, do you have something better? Do you have a better strategy? Am I a dog? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Next verse. And the Philistine said to David, come to me, I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. David responded. David said something. The battle must be won in your mouth. The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. This is the word of faith which we proclaim. Romans 10, 8. Fight with your words first. Fight with your words first. You think you're being polite by having negative confession, but you're killing yourself. You're killing your destiny. You're killing your future. Fight with your words. So the Philistine knew that even though this is a small boy, he still has to say something. Wow. Even Satan knows he has to use words. But you, you're quiet. Open that thing and say something. Die quietly. Do you know the difference between animals and human beings? There's only one thing between animals and human beings. And don't say the brain. Some animals have better brains than human beings. In some aspects. So, for example, you don't have a better swimming brain than a fish. A fish has a better swimming brain than you. A bird can fly. You, you, some of you even walking is difficult. Now imagine flying and staying on course and knowing I'm going for the other tree, but the wind direction is in this direction. I have to counter it. I have to move at a certain angle to be able to reach there. These creatures are very brilliant. Dogs have better smell than you. That's why you have them at home to smell when there is danger. The only thing that human beings have that puts them above animals in every available category is words. The reason you have dominion over the animals is because they can't talk. Imagine if your cow talked back one day and say, Chale, me I want cabbage, I don't want that grass you keep giving me. Your dominion is finished. The only reason we have dominion over animals is because we can talk and they can't talk. Are you following? David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. You can get up on your feet. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from you and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel oh yes by the time God is done with you, people will come and say, show me your God. Take me to your God. Direct me. Because there is something about you. The way you've dealt with the giants in your life, I cannot handle. Praise God. Goliath is not here to destroy you. 
Goliath is here for your promotion. It's a matter of perspective. That challenge is there to promote you. To take you to the next level. There's a, a lady called Gloria Copeland. The wife of Kenneth Copeland. Being a faith family, their family was expected to be very like this. And then his, her son started going wayward. And she started praying one hour every day for her son at a certain time in the morning, regardless of the, the weather or where they are in the world. That was her commitment. She was like, I'm going to pray my son back into the kingdom. Which I think she succeeded in doing. But do you know the other thing that happened? Out of that daily commitment of one hour, God gave her a healing ministry. That's why at all the Kenneth Copeland events, the person who prays for the sick is Gloria Copeland. God gave her a healing ministry from the despair of praying for her son. She, she stored up so much power that when she went to the meetings, even though it was her husband mostly preaching, when people came and she laid hands on them, they got well. Your crisis is going to produce a crown. A crown. You receive a ministry. You receive wisdom which you will never have had without that crisis. You will receive a heart of gratitude which you will never have had without the crisis. There is a call in every crisis. There is a crown in every crisis. If only you can interpret it correctly. And say, hmm, I see this giant. You see, everyone was thinking the giant is too big to beat. David was thinking the giant is too big to miss. Your giant is too big to miss. Get armed, child of God. Get ready with the word of God. Get ready with the Holy Spirit. The giant is too big to miss. Then David put his hand in his bag. Verse 49, and took out a stone. And he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead. Your word shall not miss. You shall not miss. So that the stone sank into his forehead. And he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and the stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistine saw that their champion was dead. That was the end. There are things God, God is going to use you to terminate in your family. Yeah. Termination. You're going to terminate. And what seems like a small victory on your behalf, on your part, is going to lead to victory for many. Because then the Philistines just fled. It's like, whoa, ho, ho. this is serious. The guys of our, our champion is dead. Oh, yes. Start praying in the spirit. Pray in tongues and pray loudly. The whole room, the whole room, the whole room. Ribra da ko vandele de brodo fosu kala brodo jina la da brade ko mandele ko shebra gare arila de ko pe de kadi de pre 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 it's your turn now
It's your turn to stand before giants. It's your turn to look at the giants that are threatening your life, your family, your generation, and say enough is enough. It ends here. It's time to draw a line in the sun. Take your plates. As a champion, as a champion, anointed of the Holy Ghost, and say it ends here, it stops here, it does not go past here. Stand on the word of God, stand on the word of God, do not give up one inch of territory stand on the word of God stand on the word of God stand on the word Maya Kalaba Brusi Kalaba Lie Kasi Maya Galebe Rada Kaya Leba Baba Baba Shinda Leba Kasi Eke Leba Baba Eke Rinaya Kaleba Baba Baba Sikaya Baba Baba Linde kalaba bobo kusikada ya keba baba baba rakada ya bobo bobo sikara kebe maye kebo rukaya baba baba pray 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 from the depths of your soul maye kebo rakada baba baba bobo sikaya baba you shall win you shall win you shall win yes. Either way you win, either way you win. Oh yes, Sombrakaya Baba Baba Rakade Kasida Baba Baya Rakada Maya Gede Sombrakada Kala Baba Mandi Kele Baba Baba Rika Zigere Baba Rika Diya Kuti Mama Shanda Baba Baba Maya Kuzi Baba Baba you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning. You're changing levels. You're shifting. Depression is leaving you. Sicknesses are leaving you. Suicidal thoughts are leaving you. Oh, yes. Power, power, power is coming into your life. You're going to walk as a powerful person, as a champion of power, a powerful champion. God is lifting you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. God is lifting you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Rise up from the ashes of defeat. 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 If anyone is screaming, falling down, or anything like that, bring them to the front yard so that they are safe. Bring them here, bring them to the front. Rise up from the ashes of defeat. Rise up from the ashes of defeat. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Oh yes, rise up, 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 rise up. 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 
God is ministering to people, changing destinies, removing things, struggles are ending. Rise up, 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 from the ashes of defeat. You're rising up, you're rising up, you're rising up. You shall not shipwreck. You shall not shipwreck. Oh yes. Maya Kalaba, Peace. Peace is yours, peace is yours. Victory is yours. Now stop. Pray, 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 pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Okay, you are in the way. I think you are in the way. Start bringing them there. Bring, bring him to the front. Hey, 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 hey. Don't block the road. Pray, pray, pray. pray. Don't become an, a spectator. You're not your spectator. People are winning, people are winning, people are winning. Oh yes, you shall not be defeated. Rise up from the ashes of defeat. Rise up from the ashes of defeat. Rise up. Rise up. People winning, people winning, people winning. People winning. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. More freely. More freely. More freely. Holy Spirit. More freely. More, more freely. Deliver us, set us free. You're being set free. Free, 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 free. Power of the Holy Ghost is in this place. Power of the Holy Ghost is in this place. Setting you free, the power of the Holy Spirit is in this place. Pray, pray, pray. Move on, shake up. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Peace. Peace, 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 Thank you, Jesus. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And you turn it for good. You take what the enemy made for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good You take 
what the enemy meant, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. And you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see victory. I'm gonna see victory for the God wants to turn your tears into purpose, into a mighty deliverance for others. Maybe you're here and you've gone through a crisis this year. Maybe in the last six months. I mean a real crisis, something complicated and difficult. God wants to turn your crisis into a crown. If you're that person, I need you to come. Please, don't, not everyone should come. If you haven't had a crisis, don't come. But if you've had a crisis, God wants to turn it into a victory. I need you to come. Stand, stand here. I'm gonna That's too many people to be having have had a crisis. So, please don't come if you just you had a little difficulty here and there. That's not what I'm talking about. Start praying if you are here at the front. The power of God is in this place to turn your crisis into a crown. You take what the enemy. Okay. You're too many. Can I have some people move back? I'm going to pray for one line at a time. One line at a time. So those who are at the front stay, you will call you, don't worry. Those who are at the front stay, I don't I don't, I don't need two lines. If you are if you are move back first. We will call you, don't mind. We'll call you. But if you've had a crisis, I need, I need only one line. Okay, team. One line, one line, one line. One line. Your crisis. Your crisis is not the end of the purposes of God. Rather, it is revealing the real you. Now, receive power to beat that crisis. Receive anointing to defeat that crisis. Receive blessing. Oh, yes. Receive power. To overcome every crisis, your tears shall become your praise. Your tears shall become a praise. Calibra kasheka kotiva. Male kashikele kuriba. Oh yes. You shall come forth as gold. You shall come forth as gold, as gold, as gold, as gold, as gold. Gold, 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 gold. It's 
Mali Kashika Lebro Sika Tai. It is okay. It is well. Focus. When I pray for you, go back, okay? Crisis. The crisis. Is a dog into new. Crisis. You defeat every crisis. Receive, receive blessing in the midst of a crisis. To search for it, to come back powerfully, 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 powerfully. Oh yes, receive the gift of God in your crisis, in your crisis, in your crisis. Oh yes, your crisis is not your defeat. I see a junction. I see a junction. I see a junction. Take the right turn. Take the right turn. Yakala brohosi kataya Mandele kusikeleba Shekeleba ba Rikada ba Katibri gidisha kala kasigere Maya kasibro Power Receive Receive power to overcome your crisis you will overcome. You 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 are overcoming. You are overcoming. You are overcoming. You are an overcomer. Overcome that crisis. Go. You take. Can I call the network leaders? Help me lay hands on. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. You turn it for good. You came up and it came up. Go ahead, go ahead and pray for them and bless them. And you turn it for good. Oh, yes. Lay hands. Put. That, that's what you're doing, okay? Move quickly. Don't take too long. That was the break out of you. Malaka shikeleba, Malaka dakaba, Praka tikasa, Mandele baba. Power in every crisis. Power in every crisis. Power in every crisis. Power in every crisis. You shall not be defeated. Manka libro husi katai. Lekoda kashikeleba. Sinde keleba. Kasubra kara. Shekele baba. Makada baba. Once they pray for you, go back. Receive victory. Thank you, Jesus. Receive your victory. Okay, wait. Do all these people know what we are praying for? Or people are just getting in the line? We are saying if you have had a crisis this year, I want, I don't want to think that all these people have, unless you are redefining crisis. Yeah, if you have had a crisis, you come. We are laying hands on you by faith to turn around that crisis into a victory. Keep coming. Pastors, guest pastors, please help me come and join this group and lay hands on these people. Yakala Bobo. Power, power, power. Power to turn it around. Power to turn it around. 
it's turning around it's turning around I need to pray quickly. I need to make an altar call for salvation. If you have had a crisis, don't come if you haven't had one. A hand is enough. Once you lay your hands, that's it. Pastor Richard, join the people laying hands here, quickly. Some people should come to you. Let's move. Move quickly, move quickly. Oh, you're turning for good. Thank you, Jesus. It is well. Are we done? Are we done? We need to finish. We need to finish. Now, everyone standing, please. Everyone standing, everyone standing. Everyone standing, quiet. All right. Everyone, is everyone standing? Now, if you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus. The one who will help you face the giants and defeat them. I want to pray for you to make a decision to receive, to receive salvation. Amen. So, are you there? Now, if you're here and you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or you've walked with God before and you walked away. And you would not describe yourself as someone who is walking with Jesus. Put your hand up like this. I need to pray for you to receive Jesus tonight. Put it up straight. Put it up straight. Are there any people putting their hands up to receive Christ? Okay. If you're there and you're, you want me to pray for you to receive Jesus, come here to the front. I want to shake your hand. Just walk and come. Walk and let's just celebrate them as they come. Now is the hour of salvation. This is the hour of salvation. People are coming to receive Jesus. Can I shake your hand? God bless you, my sister. Stand right here. God bless you, my brother. More people. Come, come, wherever you are. Don't let anybody stop you. Come and receive the free gift of salvation. Just come. Salvation is available. It's okay. Come, I just want to shake your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're blessed. You are 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 blessed. God bless you. You are blessed. Come, come. Anyone else? You want to receive Jesus? Come. Come. We are waiting for you. Don't mind these people at the front. We are still praying for them. God bless you. It is okay. It is well. It is well. Be free. Be free. God, be free. Free now. I need someone there. Come. Come, 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 come. God wants to save your soul from demonic oppression. From demonic oppression. Come.
okay. You see, there's a fight for your soul. Salvation is not just a religious thing. There are people here, Satan wants to cling to them. But God wants to set them free. And God is setting his people free. Oh, yes. Freedom. Freedom in the house. Freedom in the house. Oh, yes. God wants to set you free. Now, I want you to ask your neighbor if they've given their life to Jesus. And if they haven't, tell them that you can come with them. Ask them. And then, can, did I? Welcome. Where did I stop? God bless you. Tell them you can come with them. It is going to be okay. It is going to be okay. Yeah. When Satan thinks he can oppress people forever. That's not possible. Are you ready, house? I want you to shout the name of Jesus seven times. Are you ready? Everybody, are you ready? One, two, we go. One, Jesus, two, Jesus, three, Jesus, four, Jesus, five, Jesus, six, Jesus, seven, Jesus! He's setting people free. Now, those who are at the front, can you pray with me? Just put your hand in your chest and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus today, today I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Forgive me my past. Forgive me my past. Forgive me my failures. Forgive me my failures. And give me eternal life. And give me eternal Give life. me a life with you. Give me a life with a you. A life full of freedom. A life full of freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from sin. Freedom from oppression. Freedom from oppression. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from uh, a lack of purpose. Freedom from a lack of purpose. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. That I may worship you. That I may worship you. The rest of my days. The rest of my days. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate? Now, the people here. I want you to go with this, these pastors here. We just want to write your name so we can be praying for you. Is that okay? And thank you for coming to Movers and Shakers today. Just follow this lady and we will be praying for you. We are still praying for our friends here. They, they are going to be okay. Yes, don't, don't worry about it. Amen. Have you enjoyed Movers and Shakers? Oh. We have overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. We have overcome. By the power of your name. Jesus, you're the one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a thing we Where's Dr. O? Shining his name.
Shout!